Well, hello! I had never seen this bottle before. Saw it in a grocery store randomly. Had heard about it, never saw it. Picked it up. I have looked for information online. I can't find it online to save my life. I don't know what we're holding here. This might be the unicorn of unicorns, and at $50, this might be the most exciting bottle that you've ever heard about or seen. I don't know. Check out this episode and see what I think about it. Hello, and welcome back to Dram's Four Dummies. I am the numero uno dummy, Brett, and it is great to be here with you today. Hope you're having a fantastic day, evening, night, week, month, year, even your year. I don't know, friends. Popped in my head. Uh, we're going to do a quick bottle review of this new hotness. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is the, the Jim Beam Burai, basically, right? And check out that bottle. Again, I love I love what, what Beam's doing. I love how they're updating everything. I like how this looks kind of like a band you got to get the green on there. Somehow, someone decided that that green equals rye. I've had people like ask, like, why is green? I don't, I don't know. Why is green rye? It's somehow became the the standard in the industry that green label equals rye. So they got that little. We've got both here, right? We're a boo rye, a boo. Sorry, boo <laughs> rye. So again, knob being good, being a good distiller, doing what good distillers should do. Starting to put age statements back on things and also disclosing what they're doing in the bottles a little bit. All right, so this is 30% of uh, straight bourbon at nine years. So we got at least a nine year, nine year old barrels at least. Uh, and that's 30%. And this is funny because I, I read this yesterday, but I didn't actually take note of the breakdown. The breakdown. So this is interesting. 70%. Kentucky straight rye whiskey, seven years. So seven year age statement rye, nine year age statement bourbon, 70% of this is rye, which if, I mean, I love what Beam's doing, but if we're gonna like quibble a little bit, shouldn't we like be green to there and then brown to there? Put your comments, marketer, marketing folks, folk minded people. This sort of lets me, makes me think, and I think I assumed that, that we're more bourbon than rye, or at least 50-50. For this to be a 70% rye, I feel like that should be more of a more of a green label. But hey, that's just me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out little things. Uh, 113 proof. Uh, they say notes of vanilla, caramel, and pepper. I think that's about that's about as basic and dumb a notes as I can probably pull. I would probably be like vanilla, caramel, oak, maybe. Pepper. I'm gonna go. You know, it's a rye, so I can I can see me saying these things. Uh, anything else interesting here? Nah, not really. Just the mumbo jumbo stuff. All right. Without further ado, as uh, the record company blasts some Rita Mae Young in the background. Great song. Great band. Let's start swirling and twirling. Just because I've been putting out more stuff recently, I'm looking at the clock and going, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already swirling and twirling and spilling bourbon on my scorebook uh, before five minutes. That's I'm 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 moving fast. I'm efficient. The cats want to get fed. I'm, I'm actually six minutes over their time, so that's where we that, that's pressuring me right now. I just got to get this thing done. Got to get in the shoot. So and yeah, that's fun watching the bourbon soak through the pages of my scorebook. We'll see how that affects things down the road. All right, let's rock and let's roll. Fairly light in color. That doesn't really mean a lot. I mean, I, when they disclose what it is, like who, I, I'm, I'm not gonna really quibble on color, you know? I mean, that is what it is. Seven and nine year uh, rise in bourbons equal that color, but it is a pretty mid to almost a light mid uh, brown in there, so. So yeah, you've got the peppery spice, you've got the rye all day long. It, I think anyone that would smell it would kind of come at it and think this is a bright, kind of spicy rye. But it does, that 30% of bourbon is probably exactly what they want it to do. It's bringing some of that sweet, hey, they said caramel, and I agree. Bringing some of that sweet caramel, the caramel notes in there. Um, I used to say fairly recently, up until maybe right this minute, that I'm kind of a rye guy. I do, I like rye heavy bourbons. Uh, I'm not a weeder, so I definitely like more the ryes. I like the, the spice and the ride of things, but I'm starting to think that I'm very um, finicky on, 
on actual hot like rise, like high high rise or rise, um, because the peppery and just that bright spice can be a little one note and it can be a little bit harsh sometimes. But I do like that the and as it sits in the glass and warms up a little bit, that the uh, the bourbon does sort of bring a smooth mellowness to this. But on a glance. Almost got that banana note in there that was interesting. Uh, because you're getting the fruits, you're getting the spice, you're getting the caramel, you're getting the pepper. So you are getting all of that. It's very bright and very punchy, very summery to me, very summertime vibes on this. Uh, I don't love the nose as like a great nose. I'm, I think it's a very solid, good nose. But again, today maybe I'm just kind of wishing it was a little bit richer and, and deeper, and it's just that more brighty, peppery, little bit of sweet, little bit of fruit, spice in there. It's good, but it also has a little funk in there. So for the sake of time, I need to hustle 6.5. Hmm. Okay, so I might have said it already. It may have gotten edited out. I don't know. I did the neck pour yesterday. I was not enjoying the neck pour. Um, it was harsh. It was kind of metallic and minerally, um, like kind of everything you don't want to have in a in a in a high rye or a, you know a rye where it's just spicy and kind of kind of um, yeah, spicy and harsh, right? That drink was not spicy and harsh. I'm going to do it again and, and get a score for you and give you some thoughts. That's not, I was coming into this review, I got to be honest with you, ready to kind of go, man, I love what Beam's doing, but that was, that's, that didn't do it for me. The nose is bright. It's up here. It's got fruit. It's fruity. It's bright. It's spicy. It's peppery. Um, it's a little bit harsh, not, and again, I don't want to say harsh, but it's not in any kind of a rich, viscous, smooth world. It's up in that bright, punchy, summertime vibe kind of world. So that's what I was expecting. And then it like rolled in the palate today. Yesterday did not do this. In the palate today, viscous, rich, sweet, uh, smooth. Uh, very caramels and and that syrupy caramel um, maybe even a little chocolate in there I'm gonna go back again and get that note um, the fruitiness go kind of goes away the the pepper spice of the rye and the nose isn't really there it's almost like the age the age of those of that 30% bourbon that they put in there somehow in the palate almost then takes over which is interesting because if you think 70 30 that's going to be a real rye, a more of a rye ride. I feel like, obviously, Beam knows what they're doing, but just 30% bourbon into that mix really smooths and, and the whole thing out. That's really interesting. Let me get scores here. Man, yeah, that's nice. Um, it's not like... I think at first I was like surprised how much I was liking it and how smooth and, and sweet it was versus what I remembered. Um, it's not like blowing the doors off anything, you know, but I, I'm going to put the palette at a 7.5. The finish, let's see what that's doing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Front and mid palette, sweet, smooth caramel. Back palette, a little bit more aggressive not into a harsh and not even to that peppery rye spice but just a little bit of more aggressive and a, and a dark chocolate comes out there that that kind of baking chocolate almost but it, but it's still sweet but it's it gets and it's i like it it because it adds a it adds a different level if it was just that kind of sweet easy um caramel smoothness through through all the way through it would be very one note and it would be very kind of boring and just meh that dark chocolate in the back adds an element that is really kind of fun. It also then sort of gives you an illusion of, a, of kind of a, of a interesting finish. But the reality is once you, once you swallow it down, the feeling is still running. 
the feeling of the finish is running, so I like that. But the flavor of the finish didn't do a whole lot of different things. Didn't come back and do any zinging. Didn't come back and switch gears. Didn't come back and bring a new flavor. It was just like that dark chocolate back. And then it just sort of was more turned into experience, more feeling, not doing a whole lot flavor-wise on the, on the finish, which is fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, but I'm going to go six on the finish because I'm just trying to be more real and more kind of, I don't know, a little bit more harsh on my notes on those things. So uh, that would be 6.7 bottle. Uh, Okay, so we've got 6.5 on the nose, we've got 7.5 on the palate, and we've got a 6 on the finish. 6.7, we're knocking on the door of really good. Now, if you could find this, if this is something attainable, would it be a buy? I think so. I mean, it's 50 bucks. Um, it's, it's because it, it's a boo rye, it's going to do something a little different for each person, right? So again, if you like the bright nose, you might love it more than I did on, on the nose. If you, but then if you're like, but I want that bright, I want that bright spicy palette. You it may let you down there, where this brings in the sweet and the rich in the palette. Um, and then if you're a finished guy, then you might be like, this kind of let me down in the finish. It just sort of fell flat. It, it's a fifty dollar bottle for the age, for the proof at one hundred and thirteen. I think you're getting a lot of value in this bottle. I think this is a bottle that you could absolutely sip straight all day long. I hope this did something for you, man. In the shooting of this, the chaos, the stopping, the starting, the cats, the the I can't find this bottle online. The I mean, it's like I'm all over the place. We'll see if I can if I've learned anything about how to edit and 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 cut down more effectively so that this is a better watching experience for you. But if you got something from this and you're liking what you know, just joining a dummy in their kitchen and understand and feeling like you've got someone speaking your language like and subscribe and do all the things and here's the big thing i mean subscribe and like first of all uh share it with your other friends who you because i mean we all have our little bourbon buddies that we like to share and drink our stuff with share it with them let them like and subscribe and then if you want to kind of make sure it keeps if this kind of voice in the world keeps going and you want to be a patreon a patron that would be fantastic too at drams for dummies on patreon Maybe I put a graphic if I feel not lazy. We'll see. Either way, love you guys, and I appreciate you for being here. And if you made it to the end, I really love you. I love all the things you're doing. You only get one life. Do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody else and you're being a positive light in the world. Then you're a fantastic human being, and I love you. And love you even more for being a part of Transfer Thanks, guys.